In this next step, we'll be painting this German yellow, RLM4, uh, for the nose. Again, we have to shake it off pretty well. You always have to stir or shake the paints to mix them up. We'll do the same thing. We'll put a little bit into the paint tray. And this paint is really good right from the bottle. So we don't really need to thin it out too much. It's pretty good for painting. Um, we load up the brush and we just proceed to paint. Here we have to be a little bit more precise because we have to do really precise paints separating the panel lines. So we have to be at an angle and on top we have to be just close to the canopy but not go over it. On the bottom we also have to be very precise following this panel line here. So that's what we need to do. It's at this point in the editing process that I found out that I actually didn't have the whole aircraft in frame when I was painting the nose section and I really do apologize that especially because it's a tutorial. But anyway, I was focusing mainly on how to be as precise as possible with my brush so that I wouldn't get any paint where I didn't need to put paint and that is why I'm using a soft flat brush for this particular paint application. All right, so this is the first pass. As you can see, I was pretty neat, um, pretty happy with it. We'll dry it up and proceed with the next pass. So I just diluted the paint a little bit with water because this is one of those times where doing a crisscross pattern to cover the surface is not gonna work very well because you need to be really precise on where you're going. But I'm gonna try to do it as much as possible. And then we have to dry it again. Coming back for more. And if at this point you are wondering, did I use a hairdryer to speed up the drying process of the paint? Yes, I was. I was doing this every single time when I was applying a coat. Uh, that's because I wanted to speed up the process and not wait two minutes for the layer to dry. Okay, so this is, I don't know which pass, but I think it's far more than four. Um, I didn't count, uh, but I still have to do a little bit more because uh, if you look closely, um, you can still see uh, the gray of the plastic shining through uh, where the paint didn't cover very well and I didn't paint very well. So I have to do probably another couple of passes and once that's done, I'll come back. All right, so I think I'm pretty close to being satisfied with the final coat of the yellow. Uh, however, there's been a couple of hiccups along the way and there's a good chance to, for me to show you. You remember when I said pooling paint is bad? Uh, well, what I meant by this is, if you can see it right here, it's really faint, but you can't see it. See this little spot here? Here, it's a little darker and up here as well. This is where I had a little pool of paint that I dried up and I didn't notice it. And then I tried to, you know, smooth it out with a brush and little craters appeared. It dried up almost completely, but then I, you know, stretched out on the surface and it left two craters. That is not desirable and try to uh, not get those as much as possible. That's why you want to thin down the paint and go in subsequent slow layers. If you go too quickly, this can happen. All right, so now we're done with this paint job. It's time to move on to the next one. Okay, so now we have to paint the nose comb. Of course, it has to be painted in half with the paint and we're basically gonna do the same thing. So we're just gonna go The nose comb is finished. Now it's time to go to the most exciting part and that is the camouflage pattern. All right, so now it's really time to do the most exciting thing and that is the camouflage pattern. Using, of course, uh, a combination of these two paints. And remember, 
in my experiment, this was the lightest and this was the darkest. So I will be painting the majority of the wing surfaces with a green color. And then once that is dry, I will be proceeding to paint this one, which is darker. You might see that the pattern on this aircraft is pretty unique. Well, unique, pretty interesting to say the least. And it has very sharp corners. Now, ideally what you wanna do is use masking tape for this opportunity. Um, because masking tape will give you a very straight edge, but we're not gonna do this here in this video tutorial for the hand painting. We'll be doing masking in the second part of the painting where we'll be doing this half of the aircraft. Um, and so we will be trying to get as straight of a line as possible using just our hands. And for that, we will need one very fine brush to define the outline of these edges and then fill it in using your flat brush. Here again, it's very important that you keep the surface of paintings clean and that you have a very steady hand. Also, this is a side profile. Um, notice how the green areas touch here and there. So try to capture as much of these as possible. We will be painting the canopy last because that is more tricky. And I'll show you how to do that too, as well. Also note that here we have to paint this little arch and that is this arch right here. This is where finesse comes into play. Not the tools that you're using, but how you use them. Also, we don't have, we have to not forget that we have to paint the back tail, uh, horizontal stabilizer uh, in this pattern as well. So we will painting this as well. Now it's only time to paint the aircraft. Apply paint to paint tray. Okay, this one is pretty thick. That's why we need to thin it out. Put a couple of drops of water. We'll take our big brush. And we'll just, we'll just thin it out. And this is the consistency that you want. You see, it has to be flowing like this. It's, it's, it's flowing fine. Okay, so now we just paint a uh, crisscross pattern, cover it as much as possible, and uh, try not to get any pools of paint. As you can see, I'm using a flat soft brush to cover the majority of the wing surfaces. And when I'm gonna go out and pick out the details, I'm gonna use a nice pointy brush to make sure that I paint the arch. Here I was trying to do it with a flat brush, but it, it turned out to be a little bit more difficult. That is why I opted to go for this little pointy brush as well. I am doing my best to paint in a crisscross pattern because the paint is drying really quickly. Acrylic paint dries uh, right in two minutes after applied. Uh, and uh, well, I'm just trying to make a good enough coverage. I did have a little bit of a boo-boo on the front of the nose. As you can see, there's a little bit of a green spillage of paint on the yellow background, but I will be able to touch it up later when I'll be finishing up the model. In between paint layers, I'm using a hairdryer to speed up the drying process of paint. Okay, so now we've come to the even coverage of this model. I'm pretty happy with how it covers. It covers really well. Um, I've done a little bit of a boo-boo here, see, here and up here where I went just a little bit over with my brush, but not to worry, we will touch up that uh, after we painted the camouflage. Now we put this aside and paint the back horizontal stabilizer. Notice how I'm loading some paint off so that I don't want to go too thick. And here again, we're using a hairdryer to speed up the drying process. We apply paints in thin coats, in crisscross patterns to cover the area as much as possible and just do it three or four times. All right, so the back one is done and I'm satisfied. Of course, we must not forget the camouflage pattern on top of the fuselage. That is why I'm just gonna be using a flat brush and cover the area generally. And then afterward, apply a more specific gray green coat of paint on top of it. This will do fine. Now let's turn our attention to the canopy. All right, so now we have to paint the canopy. This is one of the trickiest parts um, where you really, really need a steady hand. And um, 
as you might have noticed, you have to hold it in a certain direction. I'm holding it with my two thumbs, my, my two fingers, see, a thumb and a middle finger. And now basically what you want to do is you want to outline uh, the green. And don't worry if you make a mess because you can tidy it up with a toothpick. Okay, so we've painted up the canopy. Now we will have to tidy this up. As you can see, I've been overly heavy on certain parts of the canopy. Uh, and well, one, this one was intentional. This one was not. Um, it's inevitable that you're gonna have to clean this off. And a good thing again about acrylic paints on shiny smooth surfaces is that you can take your toothpick and just scrape it off and it's not gonna damage anything. And you can really make a nice sharp line. Ooh. See, if you go too much, you have to do it again. This way, this time I've overdone it, but you get the point. Okay, so we've tidied up this. Now we have to paint it back because I've taken out too much. And you basically do the same thing as before. You just load up the brush and go over it again. And you can repeat this step as many times as you need is to get the desired result. And the more precise you are with this step, the less work you're gonna have. But you know, practice makes perfect. All right, so that's the canopy done. Now let's move on to the camouflage. So it's finally time to complete the camouflage pattern on this aircraft. And it's pretty simple and straightforward. You just have very straight edge lines that continue um, from this point here and you're just gonna go with zigzag in sort of straight line. On the wings, yes, but here on the top of the fuselage, you can be a little bit more um, your own as well as on these little tail section. So, how to do this? How to transfer this pattern onto the wing? Well, the easiest way would be to take a look at the picture diagram, where you can see that there are certain panel lines which this line crosses. And so, this is kind of your guideline as to where the pattern starts and stops. So roughly, if you put the model next to the drawing, um, take your little pencil, a soft pencil, and just mark out the edges of where a certain camouflage pattern starts and ends. So this one starts somewhere like here, like here, and then it stops abruptly right on the edge here and then it kind of goes straight somewhere along this direction. It starts here, then continues upwards towards the leading edge of the wing. And here is you really have to kind of eyeball it because there's really no way of doing this other than to do this. So let's say it starts, stops here and then continues back down to the back portion of the wing, so right here, right here, right? So this would be like a zigzag motion. 
Okay, so how to transfer this straight line? Well, this is where a ruler comes in handy. And we'll just trace out these lines as best as possible. Uh, try to go a little bit inwards towards the green area so that you will be able to cover it up with the darker paint. Um, so let's start here and let's find our little outline. And we're roughly in this direction. We'll mark this and pull the line right across. See the line? Then we will trace this line here. Very gently. Like so. And then complete it by connecting the last dot. Like so. So this is your basic outline of the camouflage pattern. Hope you can see it. Now, the trickiest part is of course following this line. But we mustn't forget the back tail somewhere in the middle of this. And it kind of goes up towards here and then goes at a slight angle and ends up here somewhere. Right, so now we just trace these lines again. It's basic, your basic outline of this pattern as well. Put the paint inside the paint tray. I'll put a liberal amount here because I don't know how long I'm gonna take. And then take your finest brush and this is where a finesse of the painter really comes into action. Where you actually have to be really careful how you go about it. So I'll just outline the line with my brush. Now the basic outline is done. You take your bigger brush and just fill in the gap. All right, so the wing section is done. And now it's basically time to do the tail. And it's the same up, exactly the same procedure as before. So this is the tail section complete. We've done the exactly same thing on the tail as we did in the wings. Now we need to do the sides of the aircraft. For this side, we can be pretty much hand painting. We don't have to mark anything up, but we do need to be within the parameters of the aircraft. So we'll just do this freehand to be quicker. We'll take some paint. We'll follow the long, um, the guidelines on the manual, in the manual. I'm trying to put my head here. 
So it kind of goes somewhere along the lines of here. And it ends in a curvy fashion. So this will be like in a, in a curvy motion. So this will be our outline for the, for the camouflage. Okay, so this is our camouflage done, but one thing is missing and the eagle eye viewer will notice this. Tail. It's supposed to be yellow. The fin anyway. So we'll now paint this real quick. Okay, so the tail fin. Um, yeah, it's supposed to be yellow, so let's paint it yellow. Okay, so the tail section is complete. Now, basically our hand painting portion of the video is completed. Let me do some touch-ups on certain things uh, with, a, with my brush off camera and we'll see each other back in the airbrush painting video. Thank you so very much for watching. See ya. Bye-bye.